Um, my name is Toby Kirschman, and I'm the CEO of DNA Finders. And uh, we're a local nonprofit group that help um, families of missing um, and also help law enforcement um, try to solve their cases using modern technology and genetic genealogy. And Things in that area are changing very rapidly. So fast. <laughs> yeah, it, it's mind blowing. The um, law enforcement, they're overwhelmed, they're, they don't even know where to start. So I'm yeah. sure organizations like yours are a really good add-on and attachment to help them kind of definitely work through and sift through those things. Yep, yes. So how did you get involved with DNA Finders? Uh, so and how did you start it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's a, a long story that starts with a bit of a gut punch. Uh, so I worked in California at the um, Department of Justice, the crime lab, and I worked there for about 10 years. And then uh, my family moved to Saratoga Springs. Wow. Yeah, big, <laughs> big change. change. Yeah, yeah. yeah, but my husband is from New York. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And um, when I got here, I worked for a little while with the uh, New York State Police. Mm -hmm. um, but that is right when um, Joseph James D'Angelo was arrested. That's a, and it was like a, a really big case. Um, mm -hmm. And I was intimately... Um, involved in it in California, mm -hmm. we were working like crazy to try to solve that case. Yeah. Um, and you know, we had his DNA from multiple crime scenes, but we had never collected his DNA as him, right, right yeah. as an arrestee or as a convicted felon or anything, right? And so he was just he kept skirting mm -hmm. and avoiding arrest, everything, and we couldn't figure it out. It was so frustrating. He was just he kept skirting mm -hmm. and avoiding arrest, everything, and we couldn't figure it out. It was so frustrating. So that's what I remember is the frustration. And then when I was here and I heard that he was arrested, I called all my old friends and I said, how did it mm -hmm. happen? Did you do it? Who did it? Yeah, and, like <laughs> what? Yeah. What and, was it? <laughs> and nobody knew. So no, no DNA analysts you know, from California even really knew it was happening and they, it was a secret. Oh God. Yeah. Um, as soon as he, what, you know, he met his uh, moment in court, I was able to talk to the Sacramento County DA's office. I had some friends there. Yeah and find out that it was genetic genealogy. Wow. So that was like light bulb. Light bulb. Yep. So I immediately enrolled in Boston University's Principles of Genealogy and um, started to really get into genetic genealogy. Wow. Yeah. So you didn't really have a background before when you were in forensics with genealogy. It was something that... Nobody, wow. nobody did and still today a lot it's of people rare. don't. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're all starting, right? Yeah. 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 So. Um, I started um, DNA Finders in, you know, just with the hope of providing whatever the law enforcement agency needed, whether it was money or um, education, training, you yeah. know, um, guidelines, there's lots of guidelines that have been published. And so we're working really hard uh, to get our website full of those things, yeah. you know. So it's whatever, whatever they whatever need. Whatever you need, yeah. Yeah, wow. yeah. So how has it been working with law enforcement on this side of things, kind of as a nonprofit? Yeah, um, they are great. They're desperate. Um, they, so much. There's so much to oh, deal with. Oh, boy. So let's talk numbers. Okay. okay. <laughs> so um, if you've got, there's two, da two databases that you can reference really fast, and one of them is NamUs, mm -hmm. and that's the um, national uh, database for missing persons and for remains. And um, it's, it's for anybody, it's for the public, and law enforcement use mm -hmm. it too, right? It's just a, a registrar of, um, you know, remains cases that are found in each state, um, just for, you know, just to keep track of these things, right? right? And so if you go to that website today and just look New York, look up New York State, there's almost 1,500 remains cases just in New York State. And that's a lot. So there's yeah, that's that's a lot. A, yeah. so we're like, all right, everybody, all on all yeah, counties. Spread out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's 62 counties in New York. Let's all solve our remains. So, um, so that's a lot of work right there. And then if you go to the FBI website the, and look at the CODIS numbers okay. for New York State, there are about um, 87,000 um, DNA crimes that didn't have a hit in CODIS just like Joseph James yeah. D'Angelo, right? Wow. 
just like the Golden State Killer. So 87,000 cases is a ton. That's astronomical. Yeah, and so, you know, the more that the law enforcement agencies are hearing about this, they really want to do it, and then they're like, how do we do it? And it's just... Um, it's it's just mind-boggling for them, so we're here right. to help. And to already be stretched thin to then say to the officers, right. yeah, we want you to learn this new technology, yeah. this new method, yeah. figure out you know all these new uh, ways of operation. Right. So right. that's where you come in. Yeah. Law enforcement has to shift a little bit. Um, they're they're used to doing things very confidentially and privately and in house. Mm -hmm. And when you want to solve a case with genetic genealogy. You have to. You can't think that way. It becomes a huge team effort that involves um, a laboratory of your choice for the sequencing. You know, you have to. You can't use your tiny lab that does CODIS. Mm -hmm. You have to use these. You know, specialized specialized equipment. Um, so that's the first thing that you have to be okay with. And then the second thing is that you have to either learn from someone like you know from DNA Finders. Mm -hmm or um, hire a, you know, a company to do the genetic genealogy. And um, sometimes that's a little, probably the politics of things. Politics. The way. And they're like, is this okay? You know, right. and it's like, yes, it is okay. You know, so it's <laughs> We're just, here to help. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's a massive shift. You say they are strapped. Like, there's not a lot of people going into law enforcement right now. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if you took a, you know, a look at like one local agency, you know, and you said, okay, how many of these people aren't working over 40 hours a week? Right. And can allocate their time to yeah. something, a case from 20 years ago. You know, that's, right. I feel like that's the struggle. Of, that's the struggle. We don't have anything new. This case is on the shelf. Yeah. We want to help, but you know, who, right. who right. can do that? So right. it's amazing work that you're doing. Um, have you seen... You don't have to get into specific specifics, but mm -hmm. what kind of successes or wins have you seen so far? Yeah, so um, there have been some very important cases that we have solved, um, and they have been both joyous and painful. Mm -hmm. um, one case that we worked um, led us to what we believe is probably a serial rapist who was born in 1899. Yeah, so when you're working with modern DNA databases, it is crazy how, you know, what you can find and, yeah. and how you can pull these people together that are related. And I was gonna say that's from relatives, right? Right, wow. yeah, and it's from a bunch of people that maybe were adopted and they want to know a little bit more about, you know, if they have any living cousins mm -hmm. or if they have, um, you know, what exactly what kind of ancestry. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. yeah. So, um, you know, what begins is this like, you know, need to, you know, identify the human being, you know, kind of can result in a bunch of really great and really awful things, right? Yeah. Um, and one of the law enforcement cases that we're working on right now is, um, we're working so hard, it's a 1994 homicide, mm -hmm. and um, we want to solve it so badly, and it is endogamous, which is just um, a term that means that the um, all of the people came um, from a similar region, mm -hmm. and so they're like um, everybody in the community, even though they've donated their DNA, they're um, they're all a little bit too similar to each other. Okay. Um, and so we're working through that right now. So that's a very complex case. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So that's our current challenge right now. So do you have a team that helps you out? I'm sure <laughs> this yes. workload can't be done by you alone. No, no. And I'm so grateful to have um, a really incredible board. Um, they're so motivated. They keep me motivated. They keep on me. Um, and that's so great, you know. Um, and then we have uh, an advisory council also of like four people who, one of them actually I need to call because he is um, inactive. Um, uh, he's working for an agency in California, and so I need, with this really difficult case, I need to talk to him about that, mm -hmm. like, you know, what are some solutions for us? Um, and then um, another part of our nonprofit is called the LEADS team, okay. and that's um, law enforcement, um, D uh, DNA services, assistance with DNA services, right? We just came up with this little <laughs> name. It makes things little, easier. Little catchy sure. name, right? Yeah. Um, but those people are trained genetic genealogists. Oh. 
Um, and those are the people, so there's four people working on that one active that case. That one case where they're trying to separate and make distinctions. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and we meet about once a week. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And then there are interns, and I really wanted to talk about that with you because um, the when you talk to y the younger generation about this new shift in solving cases, um, like they have no problem, you know, finding right from wrong or like, mm -hmm. you know, and they'll be like, this needs to happen. I love their energy. Yeah, this, the new generation is very fired up, especially about crime and yeah. about cold cases and like, yeah, what happened here? And it's just, right. it's so easy to get so kind of wrapped up and it's great to see that you're okay no here are the steps yes. this is what we need to do this is the way that yeah. we can get some new information right yeah instead of just like it's so much what do we do i know right yeah. yeah the other thing is that if we teach the graduating forensic science students and criminal justice students like all the ins and outs about this mm -hmm. they're going to go get hired they're going to be crime analysts. They're going to be forensic scientists. Right. They're going to be they're going investigators. To have that edge up of, yes. hey, we know what this yeah. new technology is yeah. and we can implement it. Yeah, That's right. Amazing. So, I'm sure you've met many family members, mm. you know, throughout your work. Um, yeah. Talk about what those personal connections mean to you and how they motivate you in your everyday work. Okay, that is such a great question. Um, it's the most important thing. Um, it's the most important thing, actually, the connections that I've made. Um, it's, it's what has kept me going when things have gotten really hard. Um, and the other thing, and I kind of learned this, I started to really you know, get in touch with this when I was a DNA analyst in California, is that no matter how much you like your coworkers or how tough your day is or just what's happening at work, you're getting out of bed and you're going in for the victim. Right, and so that, I mean, when you work with, um, you know, people that have the families of missing people, and Yvonne, I just, I mean, her motivation is my motivation, and they, uh, they don't forget. Um, and then also when you start to look at, like, the New York numbers, and you look at these cases, um, somebody's missing that person. Right. That's like, a, you know, 1,500 people are you know, being missed. <laughs> yeah, you know, so let's let's start taking some steps to try to knock that wrap number that down, up, you know. Little, so yeah. so that's who I'm uh, working for right now and that's like just super important. Yeah. That's... Well, um, I did want to say that um, everyone's case is completely unique for the investigator, for the law enforcement agency and for the family. And so, um, for example, like with Yvonne Harbour's case, um, when she gave me a call, she didn't even know what I could do for her, you know. And so it's so important if you have a question um, about any of this stuff to just reach out, email. Um, and, you know, I, I worked with, DNA, with um, the DNA situation with Yvonne and I said, hey, um, there's a lot you can do, actually. You know, you can help out the case. So get ready. For yourself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let's get your DNA done. Let's get, you know, the DNA done of a few key family members. Mm -hmm. Let's make sure that they're uploaded to GEDmatch, FTDNA. And there's a new, a third DNA database. It's a nonprofit called DNA Justice. And that's coming on board. And so that's, so if anybody asks, how can I help? <laughs> That's, Put your DNA in. Yeah, contact yeah. DNA Finders, reach out to me, however anybody wants to, and we will help. We'll help you get your DNA into the database. The second thing that's really important, if you can do it, is to build your own family tree with your missing person in it. Okay. That's really important. And sometimes the individuals don't really have the skills to go back, like the genealogy skills to go back, you know, and four generations. Right, and yeah, so we help with that. We will make you know a giant tree, and the nicest thing, I was just talking with Yvonne this morning, now that there's that $10,000 reward poster, that's what's gonna go into the, the icon at the, oh, in the, the family, family tree. Wow, right? that's amazing. Yeah, so, so. As soon as someone sees his name, that's the first thing they'll see. That's right, that's and so, you know, it's, you know, sometimes it's a hard situation to think about that your loved one might not be alive anymore, but, you know, 
a lot of families get to the point where they want to do they everything. Want to know either way, yeah. And the they want, wonder yeah. is just torture, I can imagine. Yeah, and they want to do everything that they can to, you know, for the case, just to get their answers that they need. 